That's me, Lance, I tie flies, and am the creator of this channel. And today is my son Fishbait's birthday, so in dedication to him, I am tying two flies, a Spider-Man Midge and a Batman Nymph. If you like to tie flies or are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified of when I upload new videos. Oh yeah, and one other thing, to say happy birthday to Fishbait, give this video a thumbs up. That's me, and this is my vice. To start the Spider-Man Midge, I need to paint a white 332nd inch bead red. To paint the bead this small, I insert a toothpick into the back of a 332nd inch bead and press the bead onto the toothpick to ensure it is secured to the toothpick. Then using another toothpick as a brush, I paint the bead with some Tester's Red enamel paint. Once the paint has dried, I place the bead onto a size 16 Mustad C49S hook. Then I feed the hook to the jaws of my vise and slide the bead to the back of the fly so it rests on the jaws of my vise. Next I secure my white UTC70 thread behind the eye of the hook. To tie in the spider webbing, also known as gills of the fly, I cut a strand of white sparkle yarn. I'll lay the sparkle yarn along the top of the fly so that it hangs over the front of the fly. Then making sure to leave a tiny bit of space behind the eye of the hook, I use a pinch wrap to secure the sparkle yarn to the shank with tight wraps of thread. Once the sparkle yarn has been secured to the shank, I wrap a couple more wraps of thread around the yarn and the hook. Then I cut the rear tag of yarn from the shank and cover the butts with thread. Now I'll wrap the thread to the front of the hook, then pull up the front of the sparkle yarn and place a couple three turn whip finishes to the shank in front of the yarn and cut the thread. Now I bring the bead back up the shank and over the yarn to behind the eye of the hook and then start some red UTC 70 thread to the shank just in front of the bead of the fly. After I cut the tag of thread from the fly, I continue wrapping the thread down the shank almost to the vise jaws. And then wrap it back to behind the bead. Now I'll cut about a 3 inch strand of small black ultra wire from the spool and place the tip of the wire against the bead on the near side of the hook and secure it to the near side of the shank with tight wraps of thread. I continue securing the wire down to the hook to about an eye length from the back of the body then bring the thread to halfway between the bead and where the wire sticks out of the body of the fly. From here, I tie a strand of blue flashaboo to the hook with three or four tight wraps of thread. Once the flashaboo is secured to the shank, I wrap the thread very loosely behind the bead and then begin wrapping the flashaboo down to where the wire is coming out of the fly. Then I'll wrap the flash of hoo back up to the shank to just in front of where it was tied in. After the flash of hoo has been wrapped back up the shank, I unwind the thread from the hook until it is where the flash of hoo is and tie the flash of hoo off with a couple tight wraps of thread and trim the excess flash of hoo at the shank of the fly without cutting the thread. Now I wrap the thread to behind the bead and tie in a strand of thread flash of hoo to the fly. I place the tip of the flash boot to the back of the bead on the fly and tightly secure it to the hook with three or four wraps of thread. With the flash boot secured to the front of the hook, wrap the flash boot down and around the hook to just barely over the blue flash boot. Then I wrap it back up to behind the bead and secure it with a few wraps of thread.
After the excess flashaboo is removed from the fly, I throw a half hitch into the thread on the hook and behind the bead and use the rotary function of my vise to wrap the rib with evenly spaced wraps of wire around the shank of the fly. Once the ribbing has been tied off with tight wraps of thread, I pull down on my bobbin and helicopter the wire until it breaks away from the fly. With a bit of red UV ice dub, I dub my thread and wrap it around the shank and behind the bead of the fly, creating a collar for the Spider-Man Midge. Now I apply a bit of head cement to the thread and throw a three-turn whip finish to the fly, then cut the thread. Once the thread has been cut, pull the gills back to over the bead and trim at the length of the bead. This is a Spider-Man midge. Now I'll tie a Batman nymph. Into the jaws of my vise, I put a size 12 TMC5262 that has an 8th inch gold bead on it. Now I'll wrap a dozen wraps of .015 lead wire around the hook shank. Then using my fingernails I break the lead wire from the shank. After I shove the lead wire into the back of the fly, I start my thread behind the lead wire and cut the tag of thread from the fly after securing it to the shank. I continue wrapping the thread around the shank to the bend of the fly. Once to the bend, I'll create a tiny bump of thread. Now I'll pull two brown biots from a stem of biots. and measure them to one half shank long. With the thumb and index finger of my material hand, I grab the biot as it is pointed to the rear of the fly at the measured point. Next, I pinch the biot to the thread bump and wrap the thread lightly around the shank for the first three fourths of the wrap and tighten the thread on the last quarter of the wrap. After the first biot has been adjusted and secured to the shank, I tie the second biot in the same way, but on the opposite side of the hook. Once the biots have been secured to the hook, I continue wrapping the biots to the hook with tight wraps of thread until it is just behind the bead. Then without cutting my thread, I cut the biot butts from the hook. Once the tail has been completed, I cut a few inches of brassy blue ultra wire from a spool and with the tip sitting behind the bead I tightly secure the wire to the hook all the way to the bend of the hook with thread. Now I take a bit of violet semi-seal dubbing from my box and twist it to the thread. I wrap this dub thread to the shank up to the bead until I run out of dub thread. Then I repeat this process over and over until the shank of the hook has a nice tapered body of dub thread that reaches between the bend of the hook to behind the bead. Once I've dubbed the body of the fly, I throw a half inch into the thread and around the hook and behind the bead.
Then using the rotary function on my vise, I wrap the rib to behind the bead with about six evenly spaced wraps of wire. After securing the ribbing down with tight wraps of thread, I pull down on my bobbin, I helicopter the excess wire on the fly until it breaks, and wrap the thread back to about a bead length behind the bead. After the body has been created, I take a bundle of medium speckled purple centipede legs and cut a strand from the hank and then cut that strand in half. I lay these strands on top of the hook so that the middle of these strands are sitting above where the thread was hanging. Then I secure the legs to the fly with a couple pinch wraps. Now I adjust the legs so that one is sitting on the near side of the hook and the other is sitting on the far side of the hook. Once the legs are sitting where I want them, I take a bit more semi-seal dubbing and twist it to the thread. Then wrap the dubbed thread around the exposed thread wraps at the center of the legs and then to the bead. To create a collar of the Batman, I prepare a hen hackle feather that's fibers are about one and a half gaps long and pull all the webby fibers from the stem. Then I cut the stem to about an eighth of an inch long. I place the tip of the feather behind the bead on the near side of the hook and secure it down with thread. I place the tip of the feather into the jaws of my hackle pliers and hold them above the fly. Then with moistened fingers fold the fibers over the stem of the feather. Once the fibers have been folded, I'll wrap the feather around the hook three times and tie it off with tight wraps of thread. As I pull my bobbin straight down, I vigorously pull on the hackle pliers to free the hackle tip from the fly. To get the hackle fibers to sit along the body of the fly, I use the fingers of my material hand to hold the fibers against the fly, and then wrap thread around the hackle behind the bead until the fibers splay like I want them to. Now that the collar is complete, I need to pull two brown goose biots from a stem of biots. Now I'll lay a biot with its natural curve pointed up, and the point of the biot sitting just past the bend of the hook slightly angled towards me along the top of the fly. Then I press the biot to the hook just behind the bead and use tight wraps of thread to secure the biot to the fly. I then repeat this process for the other horn but have the biot pointed away from the center of the fly. Once the horns have been secured to the hook shank, I cut the butts of the biots as close to the thread as I can without cutting the thread. After the biot butts have been covered with wraps of thread, I apply a bit of head cement to the thread hanging just below the fly. Then I put a couple three turn whip finishes on the fly, then cut the thread and trim the legs to the back of the hook. This is the Batman Nymph. Happy birthday, son. I hope you have an awesome day. The Spider-Man Midge and Batman Nymph are cool superhero patterns that are fun to tie. Give this video a like to say happy birthday to Fishbait or let him know in the comments below. If you like this tying demonstration, check out the demonstration I did of the Superman fly in the top corner or check out the Green Lantern below that. Don't forget to like Fishbait's fly box on Facebook and to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Now go take out the Green Goblin and the Joker by tying these super patterns.